Let's take them back to Nigeria and let's teach them a different kind of job. A woman on NTA. My name is Elizabeth Abai. I'm always excited to sit here and have beautiful conversations with women who are touching lives in different places. Women who are representing not just the gender, but the male folk, the world globally, especially their creator. My guest today is someone who has uh, transversed the whole continent, if you ask me, and touching lives as she moves on. She is one person you want to sit back and listen to because she has a whole lot to pour out. She's a woman you want to sit back because she has a lot of experiences to share. She is one person that will inspire you, inspire me, even as I chat with her, because she has so much, you know, on the spiritual realm to give out to people. If you're just joining us, the conversation is about to start. My guest is a spiritual leader of a certain sect. She is a philanthropist. She is a mother. She is someone who is always ready to teach, to learn, and of course, to pour out whatever it is that she has. My guest is none other than Reverend Mother Abimbola Esther Ajay, CEO, Love of Christ Generation Church, the Iya Ladura. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Another beautiful, beautiful day that the Lord has been. We rejoice in and we glad in it. Reverend Mother, Abimbola, Esther Jai, Love of Christ Generation Church, Sherubi and Seraphim, where the glory of God shines. Honestly, it does shine. And I think you take all the shine most of the time. <laughs> You're constantly laughing, constantly happy, constantly smiling. What's the secret? The secret is don't keep negativity in your heart. Excuse me, this one offend you, you are not going to forgive that one, you are keeping malice. Let your heart be pure. Who is going to ascend into the hill of the Lord? The book of Psalm, chapter number 24, that have a clean heart and a pure heart. Once it's pure, laughter is all over the places. Honestly, I need to learn from that because I tried to go into your album before coming here and I kept flipping. I kept flipping. You know what I was looking for? I was looking for a particular place where you were angry. I never got around to see you. <laughs> And I keep wondering, what would I do to make this face work? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that any human being that says sometimes it doesn't get to you, it's a liar and an hypocrite. But the only thing that we stand by the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter number four, that verse number 26, be angry but sin not. Don't let the sun come down on your eye. Right. When you offend me, I will say it and then quickly I get it back. It's my life. You choose this. I always say this. There are two invisible remotes controlling your hand. You can see one is that of happiness. The other one is melancholy. You choose the one you want to play. If you play the happiness one, you're always happy. Whatever thing you don't allow to get to you will never get to you. It's you. You are in charge of this. It's your life. You've got control over this. You get angry about it, but you move away from it. Don't let it get back to you. And that is how to live and be happy. Yeah, and taking you know your journey from where it really started, I still remember a story you once told us how you told yourself this is what you're going to do, and in regards to your ministry, and you never looked back until the Lord actualized it in your life. You know, I, I now see where it's coming from. But beyond what you uh, set up as your ministry and is doing so well, we know that um, a lot of people set up ministries for a certain reason even when it's not spiritual they call it NGO within a short space of time it feels like you set up your own and almost from nothing until today the glory is you know constantly on high and I'm asking what are you doing differently? I always say this if the creator of the whole universe is with you on a mission the mission becomes so easy I'm a pastor. I always go back to the Bible, the book of John. John chapter number 3, that verse number 27. Nobody can receive anything except if it's given to you from heaven. If your creator is with you, who can be against you? The book of Romans, Romans chapter number 8, that verse number 31. It says, what then can we say unto this? If God be for us, who can be against us? If your creator says yes, nobody can see me. And you can't achieve anything without him. And that is where my hope and my trust is in. 
I commit everything into his hand, I wait patiently for him, it will appear and appear good. And then do good, act against evil. And if the creator of the whole universe says that genuinely, why do you want to acquire wealth? The power that is in the book of Luke, Luke chapter number six, that verse number 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. So it's not about the people that you are blessing. It's even about you because your creator is going to return back more. You know, talk about this and I keep reflecting on what you, what you have been doing. The one that really caught me, um, you know, I, I still look at the boy today. I, I find myself saying, glory to God. That's the orange seller. Ah, your midday. Oh. I immediately gladdens my heart. Let me tell you, it's not about helping this amazing child. It's about him being so grateful. Say, mommy, mommy, good morning. God bless you for me. It's not at the university. It's at like Caleb a Perfect University. All the time and every time, this child is ever grateful. Ever grateful. He doesn't want to offend me. He doesn't want to do anything. Mommy, God bless you. He just left Abuja. He left Abuja yesterday. He, we all came for the program. After the program, he will still come. He will still prostrate. Mommy, thank you. God bless you for me. Uh, sometimes I feel like crying. Very, that child, gratitude is his attitude. He came, he learned it, and it has become part of him. Amazing. Now you're talking, I think you should actually speak to Nigerians about gratitude. You know, the place of gratitude in getting more extra you know, I, I, I think we should talk about it a little bit more. Let me tell you this. The book of First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter number 5, that verse number 18, it says, in all things, give thanks. In everything. It's not saying, it's, it's, when it's augering well, when it's not augering well, obviously, it can't augur well all the time. The book of John, John chapter number 16, that verse number 33, in the world, you shall see tribulation. But be of good shares. I have conquered the world. Your creator have conquered. Keep thanking him. Because he always gets there before us. I pray Almighty God will give all of us the heart of gratitude. Instead of complaining, complaining about Nigeria, we don't know what is happening. We don't Let's thank God. At least we are still alive. And we know the thought that the Lord is thinking towards us. The book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter number 29. That verse number 11. It's the thought of goodness and not of evil. So be confident our creator is more than able. Thank him for what he has done, what he's doing, and what he's about to do. All right, you did mention that um, you, your Ayomide uh, came with you to Abuja and uh, yeah. Yeah. And I know that um, you came for a program. I tried to follow up on the program when your press release came out and um, it talks about uh, comforting the comforter. No, it's celebrate the comforter. Okay. Celebrating Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is oh, the comforter. Okay. Okay. The book of John, John chapter number 14. That verse number 26 says, I go to my father and I will send a comfort at you. He will teach you all things and he will remind you all things. So we are celebrating Jesus Christ. That Lord, you want our celebration. You want us because this is the time that we need you to comfort us. And that is, the, 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 I, I told uh, the story before, 2016 at the United Kingdom. The, my church started from the United Kingdom in 2007. I had a dream. Mammoth crowd, some in cherubim and seraphim garment, some in celestial garment. And then all of us in blue loins. And then I woke up and we found out that the common color between cherubim and seraphim and celestial color blue. And then the very first edition, 2017, Excel Center, United Kingdom. Then the next edition uh, in New York, United Palace. Then we came to Nigeria, Lagos State, Afabali was the third edition. Then coming to Abuja, the source where the authorities can find that. Celebrate the comfort. At this time, we need to celebrate our Creator. Thank Him that with all that is going on, we are still on our feet. We are still standing. And look at look at just what's on uh, the election last year. Everybody in the world, they were all waiting for us. Mm -hmm. They were thinking it to turn to war. And look at us here. So we have to celebrate Him. And as we are celebrating, we prayed. We prayed for Mr. President and his family. Pray for the country that God should please turn our economy around and then pray for world peace. So this is the season to actually celebrate it. I also noticed that um, you had a way of uh, dropping um, uh, tips for Mr. President, because you said um, he should flood the market with 
Food. Food. Tinubu <laughs> meat. Tinubu rice. Tinubu garden. Tinubu beans. You see, the the Nigerians we are not asking for too much. Food on the table, electricity, water, and good road. It's okay. Everybody's like, what number one? Uh, food. Food. Because what was it? in my compound alone, I run the church. And I run my church to the glory of God as a charitable organization. I was 62 of them. Every day was sit in my company. Three times daily? No, in the morning and in the evening. At least they are sure of their dinner. 100%. Everybody must have dinner. The cleaners, we are in the church, we have standby nine cleaners, 24 hours. Because the maintenance, the thing I observe is our maintenance culture. And then we want to say, no, here we maintain. So we, when food is out of poverty, ah, the remaining thing in that poverty is just little. It's my, my town people's adage that when food is out of God will help. Amen. You have to definitely help us. Now, I'm still going back to you as a generation 62. Mm -hmm. I was trying to do calculation here. How many there's stomach? Be particular. <laughs> I'm like, wow, how am I going to survive this? <laughs> it, is, it is pushed to, it, to me. But in all of that, I see a, a very tight bond between you and your family. I mean, I haven't been that long here, and I know within the short space of time, mm. it was spent, you'll be able to talk to your husband, mm. you'll be able to talk to your children. Mm. And I'm wondering, how do you coordinate? Because some people are so busy that. The home front is true. We still go back to what I've said. When your creator is with you on a mission, the mission becomes easy. And then that is when you have pure heart. Holy Spirit is your teacher. He tells you, oh, now it's time to talk to your husband. Now talk to your children. Now it's time to talk to your grandchildren. Now it's time to talk to your church member. I'm a pastor. I'm a mother. I'm a friend. I'm a grandmother. I'm a confidant. I do this together because of him that strengthened me. The book of Zechariah, Zechariah chapter number four, that verse number six, it says, it's not by power, nor by mind, but my spirit says the Lord. And if you can put it at the back of your mind, you can't do it if you say you can do it. It's beautiful. How do you relate with your grandchildren? Because I know that um, for a long time standing, I've monitored you with your kids, and even mm -hmm. non biological kids. Mm -hmm. You seem not to let the youth in you die. Mm -hmm. So are you transmitting the same thing to your Yes, it's going to be nice, nice. One particular one. <laughs> Olivia looks so much like me. Oh, wow. uh, with, my, with my grandchildren around me. Because they say, when they come visiting, they say, we are not going. I want to stay with grandma. They, 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 they are saying, we are going. It's because grandma, we allow you to have nearly everything. That's it. I do my thing with them because I don't want to fail in any area of my life. And I always pray that my Creator should please help me. Because as we are going along, sometimes the thing of the ministry can take all your energy, but you keep reminding yourself, I've got this, the Lord has put me in charge of this, and God on my side, everything is falling in place. You know, that's, that's the thing to um, take home uh, you know, to, because um, I had a gathering, you know, and I was in a gathering, and I heard um, a comedian, who was talking about women, and he said that um, any, the, you know, easiest thing to do to a woman to make her lose focus is to push her towards <clears throat> the religious home, be it uh, the church or whatever. Mostly the uh, Christian women, they listen to their pastors more than they listen to their husbands, more than they listen to their children. And I was wondering, uh, uh, should we really throw that line to the point where the home front is lost? As followers, you know, how do we strike a balance between uh, serving God and being a good wife? And mother? Between your creator first, it will teach you all things. Let me tell you, if everything is changing, the standard of the Bible is not changing. Ephesians chapter number five, from that verse number 22. Wives, submit yourself unto your respect your husband. Husband, love your wife. If you balance it, you are not going to deviate from anything. In fact, it will continue to fall in place because I know that if I am, I am staying too long in the church, once I come home, I know how to do it with my husband. Hey, Baba, how are you doing? Have you eaten? I put your food by that side the table. Then I will start to say incantation of his place. 
Can you look away? She was together. When you get on me, and they say, Ah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let us see. I've been waiting for you, and that's it. So once the standard of the Bible is what you are living, there is no how you are going to miss it. I'll ask you a question. Somebody asked me, and I said, anytime I have opportunity of talking to um, a woman who is a uh, God fearing and serving God, to I will put the question back to you. And I'm going to put that question. He said, um, you know, is marriage in getting choosing a man to marry, and um, what is the place of love? You know, and I, I try to also talk to her that Bible says we should a woman should be submissive and a man should love. Mm. And constantly, it's a tug of war for uh, us, uh, between me and the very young ones. You know, so they say, I must fall in love before I marry. Mm. And I'm asking, for the woman, submissive, trust and love, which should be the priority? Submissive. Let me tell you, if you are submissive, it's going to bring out everything from that man. Respect begets respect. And respect does not even... Begat only respect. It begats everything. The book of Proverbs. Let me tell you. Proverbs chapter number 15. Uh, that uh, last verse is honor. You understand? Humility comes before honor. When you are humble, you can take anything from anybody. Nobody, everybody loves honor. When people see me, they see me with Bami Eno Kadejari Adebui. They see me with Mami Fudu Adebui. See me with Bami Uyedeku. It's honor. Once you come and you are not haughty, you are not arrogant, they will fall in love with you. Mm -hmm. They will like, well, who doesn't love honor? That somebody came and this person is kneeling for you. And then that, when, see, that man married. You are a pastor. My own situation, I have to be even more humble because he didn't marry a pastor. It was alongside that this pastoral thing came. So, I have to be double humble so that he is not feeling bad about this. Mm -hmm. He's not regretting this. Mm -hmm. So, you finish worship at one o'clock. Both of us, we share the grace. We are out of the church. I know I'm not going to get inside that house until about 2.30. So, I can't come back inside that house and raise my face. Can't you see I've been busy? Excuse me. It has got nothing to do with that. <laughs> it is pretty obvious that you are doing that. But you have to let him know that ah, Baba, after Jesus, Jesus Christ is still you. I see as I, I see the, my uncle, my father, brother, I beg. So there is no how it will be hungry. I know it's God that is doing it, but you see, as as God is helping, you also you are helping situation. And I pray the, the the power and spirit of humility. God will put it on younger generation. They call me old school. If old school is making me glory. Making me happy. Let me stay with old school. Do you still cook for the husband? I cook. Everybody knows me. My husband have gone to the farm today. We are harvesting a vegetable. And they will do. I still cook. I cook. You want to get the best egusi soup? Get a goosey. Break egg in that egusi. Mix it. Put onion. Put palm oil. Put it. The onion and the melon. The egusi. And the egg will come. Bah. And then by the time you, you don't need meat. So all this, all this, you, you can't you, you cook. I love cooking. I enjoy cooking. I love preaching, praying. I do exercise. I enjoy cooking. I was going to ask about your exercise. Uh, because I see you came to say Yes. yes. Exercise is life itself. You can't, you can't live it from life. And once you do that, and then you balance your food, you are good to go. That's beautiful. Now, before I let you go, I still want to extract some more, one or two more things from you, especially to women. At this moment, you know, everybody's shouting, things are talk, things are talk. And um, some quarters have actually said that women are beginning to exploit their, you know, themselves, their husbands, you know, using uh, the scenario, the economic scenario, as a, a basis to do that. I want you to help talk to the women on how to cook economically with their families and how to manage up without uh, losing the ends. Let me tell you this. Yeah, that man's help me. What is happening is not peculiar to Nigeria alone. It's all over the world. And the way forward 
is to come closer and then uh, bond tighter. Now, I just mentioned something about Egusi. That Egusi, even if there is no meat or fish here, by the time you break two, three eggs with that melon and mix it together, and then put um, uh, onions, and fry in them, put pepper, let me tell you, by the time they remember fish or meat, it's too tasty, too nice. Do you understand? There are areas where we call it, I always say this, it's not cut your, cut your clothes according to your, Size. Your size according to your clothes now. According to the clothes that is available, diet now. You lose some weight and then you the clothes will come and be fixed. So this is not peculiar. Okay, weight. the clothes is small. You yeah. lose weight. Lose weight now. When you <laughs> when you lose weight, the whole thing will balance. <laughs> Go into water fasting. It's going to help your body. Flush out toxin and then the clothes will come to size. <laughs> so that's the way forward. Let's help ourselves and become the helpmate that we actually, that the Lord has sent us to be. To be. That, that's why a man will leave his father and his mother and live with his wife, they become one body. So one body now, this is the time to prove to the world that we are one body. So you just mix mad. And there are lots of things you can do. And if you have vegetables, like my husband went to the farm now, to me, and you have good locust beans, excuse me, it's, it's even going to help our system. Too much red meat stuff is not good. So this time around, just put little, little crayfish, dry fish, mix it. If you present it with love, it's going to be sweeter than without love. <laughs> now, I want to know how you are able to constantly stay in touch with young people. Because I try to follow you quite a lot, and I see that uh, you will really relate to them on daily basis. How do you do that? My baby daughter. My baby daughter is my teacher. Oh, wow. What is going on? I said, Mommy, this is the dance that is going on now. Once you get to any church, once you do this, all these people, they will laugh. They will, I say, hey, okay, let's go. And to, to our work, once I get there, I love to come to their level. Because when you do it, you go, go down to your age. Mm -hmm. you know, so you're a pastor, they want to look onto, they want to emulate you. So the way forward, Come to the in as long as it's still biblical, mm -hmm. come to their level and then take it up. And then before you know it, you grow really younger and then you know what's going on. <laughs> so what what guys is doing on <laughs> that's that is going on. Uh, there are lots of them who <laughs> hey, my Jesus, hey, we you learn it, you come. So when you draw that, when they see it, mom, you are in this, they are always very happy. And then by the time you are preaching the gospel, they are ready to listen. Thank you so much for coming. But I know that um, every day things um, you know, keep going. I know that you told me that you don't really have much interest in politics. They always be there to support you. Mm -hmm. Some of our women are out there, you know, representing us. Mm -hmm. And um, as a spiritual leader, how would you like you to speak to them? That Joshua chapter number one, from verse number three to verse number nine, three times in just about six verses, the Lord mentioned to Joshua the son of Nun, be bold, be courageous, be bold, be courageous. If you go to the book of Esther, that Esther chapter number two, when it gets to verse number 15, it says, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of everyone that was looking at her. Let me tell you, if you are not bold and courageous, and then you just say, oh, I don't know how to do it, I don't, be bold, be courageous. What a man can do, a woman can do even better. And the most amazing thing about we women is that we put our emotion, even with whatever thing that is, so go out, into that world, baby girl, go do it, get it. If you get to Rwanda now, Rwanda 64% of their economy run by women. So we can do it. Be bold, be courageous. True. Yes, we can do it. And if you've been listening, I'm sure as women, we have taken so much away. And uh, the basic thing for me is that, yes, we can. That's what our spiritual leader has just given us. And we must work and run with it. Thank you so much for coming Thank you. And when you go back, we wish you a lovely trip and a beautiful stay where you are.
Thank you. Oh, let's go do this. Go, let me tell you, an I do hand is the devil's workshop. Keep doing something. Let me tell you, you are waiting for that employment. That's something that you know you have passion on. In my church, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching divine entrepreneur. You can do divine kokoro, divine kulin kuli, divine ogi, divine eforiro, divine egusi soup. Let me tell you, a lot of people doesn't need shop now. Once you have this smartphone on your palm, you have the whole wide world. Put the, the, the smartphone in your palm. Do something. You saw it, do it differently. Some, some young people are discovering my, my garment now. They say, mom, we can brand you. We can so think of where you have your passion. Continue to do it and pray to your creator to put his yes on it. And the sky is not just your limit, it's the beginning of our amazing thing. Okay, divine uh, kokoro, divine plant. Divine ogi. Divine ogi. Divine crayfish, you divine package them. Divine it's packaging. <laughs> <laughs> divine kuli kuli kasagari. Okay. Package. All right, so divine program. And <laughs> <laughs> this one will come to an end. We hope you had fun watching us, and not just fun, you also then. Like, my name again is Elizabeth, and we're having a wonderful time with our spiritual mother here, Mother Esther Abimura Ajayi. Thank you.